Have you noticed something weird? If you go on social media, you will see dozens of women after a breakup talking about how they don't want to be alone. But the surprising bit is that they'll never work on themselves to make them more appealing to men. We need to understand how this came about. Well, these women were born and raised to believe that the world around them owed them everything they wanted in life. They were told how to use and exploit men, and they were told how to ensure that men always revolved around them, ready to help, support, and be available for any sort and kind of intimacy that these women wanted for themselves. They were also told that men are meant to be used and discarded, and that women can monkey branch from one man to the next, to level up on resources, money, social influence, and power. These women fear and despise men who have taken the back seat in relationships, and have chosen to go their own way and live their lives as free and independent men, without the hassles of dealing with demanding women who only use and exploit them. Let's get one thing straight. Most single men are straightforward and direct. They are single because they don't have enough worth. They are either unwanted or they haven't put forth enough effort to improve themselves to gain the respect of women. Simply put, unmarried men are reluctant to approach women out of concern that they might come across as weird and be turned away. Would you believe me if I said the game is entirely different? Modern women truly despise single men, not one, but all. Women despise all single men, and the more single men they see, the more cause for anxiety they have. Why? Because that makes them believe that since men are happier being single, will they never want to be with women? And if they don't want to get into relationships with women, that really leaves women in the dark who have always used and exploited men for their resources. Resources that these women will no longer have any access to. Men now truly understand the nature of women. Many successful and educated guys understand that women exaggerate their feelings. This is not solely my viewpoint. Every stand-up comic and successful man who has easy access to women will admit that they analyzed the cost-to-rewards ratio and discovered it to be negative. In reality, the danger-to-benefit ratio declines even further when you take into account contemporary problems like harassment legislation, divorce pitfalls, and allegations. In order to pursue a more fulfilling form of happiness, Many men who had unpleasant interactions with women simply gave up and started living as bachelors, working out, creating businesses, and traveling. Happiness that a woman is incapable of giving. Men are aware of the nature of women and no longer desire to play that game. They even overcame their innate impulses and stopped attributing their happiness and worth to the women they chose to date. Instead, they began to rely on their life's mission, which is a fatal blow to the woman who relies on these men to approach her in clubs so she may receive free drinks, extravagant dinners and clothes, and write about it all on social media. It's also important to know that women can't control men the way they could before. The woman no longer has control over men, thus it poses a serious threat. Women would be pursuing men, while men would be too preoccupied with their objectives to give a damn if these men had inspired even more men. Remember that women's attractiveness and appeal are finite, and the instant she reaches her limit, she will leave the dating scene. The value of a man, on the other hand, will increase if he stays unmarried since he has nothing to lose. She will be in a lot of trouble if she doesn't find a boyfriend right away. She has no other choices if the man doesn't show any interest in her. Throughout history, the genes of women who were more effective in influencing men have been passed on to the next generations. They hate Megta because it goes against what they believe and they are furious with us since we took what they said literally, rather than using it as a test to put them in their appropriate place. Males today can be divided into two categories. The first group is the weak men who indulge the whims of women. The second category consists of blue pills, who want to please women in order to have close relationships with them and discover genuine love. They respect the wishes of women, then there are the men who follow their own path and take seriously women's assertions that they don't require men. If this is the case, they contend, then enjoying intimacy and taking all of the risks are no longer adequate justifications for a man to stay in a relationship. Men used to die in conflict with less pain and suffering, at least in the past. Nowadays, a man is in a much worse predicament than a man who perishes in battle if he gets divorced and loses his home, kids, wife, and sense of purpose along with respect and self-esteem. Women can no longer play the victim cards like they could in the past. 
Now, since men know the true nature of women, they also know the games that women play to lure men into relationships, and then use their wealth and resources to enjoy life, only to monkey branch to other men. And women perfectly mask all of this with the Hollywood-style narrative of love. Women merely want us to fall for the trap and engage in a rigged game of love is our battlefield with them. Women gain power by portraying weakness because it motivates males to step up, get involved, and take care of them. Males will, however, go their own way and look for other reasons for existing in addition to defending women as women assert their power more and more. If women don't need our protection, why are we still around? While women want men to stick by their sides, look after them, and listen to their problems, they also want men to think they are independent of them. Men who prefer to act independently tend to stay away from women and refrain from playing the game. Instead, we decided to stay in the grubby liberal cities. As a result, we accumulate more wealth and alienate the women, who are disillusioned when they see what they are unable to acquire. All in all, Megtaw men who choose to go their own way are going to severely deplete the ability of women to use men on a larger scale. When the economics of it is not in favor of women anymore, the markets will shift. More men meant more leverage for women in the past. With fewer men in the dating pool, the leverage is now going to start going toward the men. Let me now discuss how women value their perception of themselves and their self-respect. Once you recognize it, a lot of things will start to make sense and fit into place. The definition of attractiveness and beauty is found in women. This is widely recognized to be their main selling point. Given that a woman's appearance is her most effective tool, women are frequently used as symbols of lust and love. That is what made her desirable in the past. The reason the beauty industry exists, jewelry has been worn for a very long time, makeup has been used since ancient Egypt, and women put so much importance on their appearance. They will find better suitors the more they can make themselves look like that. A woman will have a sizable pool from which to select her ideal partner, and she will almost surely select the one with the highest value. That implies that the size of the pool a woman may attract is the main determinant of her value in society. If no one approaches her and she is turned down, she will become completely worthless. If you think being rejected as a man hurts, wait till you see how rejection affects women. When they are rejected, women completely break down. They simply aren't accustomed to it. When a date is canceled or they are rejected, women have a hard time digesting the truth. This means fewer chances of receiving free online validation. Some women like these can even be found on TikTok. When they are in their late 20s and have fewer options for partners, you'll find them more frequently. Women, particularly contemporary women who were the most hypergamous women ever, fear single men who are content with their lives. It makes them sick to their stomachs to see a man who is single and yet who is so happy and doing so well, isn't asking for attention from women and is neither giving it freely online on dating websites such as Tinder. This threatens women's ability to attract men and diminishes their worth, because that's what society expects. They've exploited males pursuing them to get their attention and making marriage proposals. According to society, you need to find the ideal girl and have a happy marriage in order to be truly happy. In order to find the actual and ideal man, women rely on this fantasy and date hundreds of guys in this manner. Because they have consistently disobeyed what society has advised them to do, lone guys are akin to rebels in that system. Also, have you ever wondered how dependent men are on women or women rely on men? This really is a thought that comes across your life occasionally and makes you wonder to what level are men and women dependent on each other. So, can women live independently of men? And I don't mean this in the sense of life or death. If the men in their lives were no longer around, would they still be able to live their lives as they do now? How would society be if men did not require the approval or acknowledgement of women in any way and were entirely self-sufficient? In keeping with this supposition, we can also state that women would be totally independent of men and would not require any type of control over them through social or cultural structures. If all males decided they were done with women and would have to live alone, it would be the end for them all. That's what terrifies women to the core. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Support us and help us spread support for men around the world. Do comment and share your thoughts. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.